You don't have to be afraid of your own emotions. Sometimes you need to engage them to let them go. Hey, I'm Dylan, and you're listening to Unlocked, your daily key to unlocking God's word in your life. Feeling emotions, especially sadness and grief, can also leave you feeling vulnerable, not a place everybody is comfortable with. So maybe we suppress our emotions, try to pack them away where we don't have to feel them, but they're still there. So how can you engage with them in a healthy way? We'll follow King David's example in today's devotion, Healing Tears by Savannah Coleman. When was the last time you had a good cry? I'm not talking about letting a few tears go and moving on with your day, but an all out feels like your heart is breaking, flooding your couch with tears kind of cry. I recently allowed myself to weep like this, and afterward, it occurred to me that it had been months since I had such a cleansing cry. Before the deluge, I felt an aching emptiness. After crying, I felt a great sense of comfort and peace. David knew all about the healing power of tears. He wasn't afraid to use the emotions God gave him to maximum capacity. When we read the Psalms of David or other Bible passages about his life, We find many times when he wept, whether it be over his friendship with Jonathan, the sickness of his baby, his enemies having the upper hand, or his sorrow over the death of his adult son Absalom. In Psalm 56, David wrote that God kept track of all his sorrows, collecting his tears in a bottle and recording each one in his book. The knowledge that God cares enough about our sorrows to keep track of them is such a comforting thought. Our emotions and tears are extraordinarily important to the one who created us. Jesus himself wept over the death of his friend Lazarus, deeply moved by the grief of others who also loved him. Read about that in John 11. Jesus is God, and he knew that he would raise Lazarus from the dead, yet in his humanity, he took the time to weep and share in the sorrows of those around him. And when his own death was drawing near, Jesus said, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death, even though he knew that he would rise again three days later. If you know Jesus, you have a promise that one day he will raise you from the dead too and wipe away all your tears. While weeping may remain for much of life here on earth, God promises that joy will come. Psalm 30. When circumstances feel hopeless, you can cling to his promises and rest in the one who cares so much for you that he records your every tear. Let's talk about this a little more. When was the last time you allowed yourself space to process your feelings with tears, whether tears of anger or sorrow or even joy? Consider setting aside some time for this and ask God to give you the courage to follow his example and utilize the good gift he has given you in tears. Now, as you and I can read in Psalm 56, verse 8, you keep track of all my sorrows. You've collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. I'd encourage you to dig a little bit deeper and read Psalms chapters 6 and 42 and John 11, 1 through 44 to keep God's word alive in your life. Now, there's a lot more Bible references in today's story than I could get to, so check them out for yourself on the Unlocked app or when you go to unlocked.org. Unlocked is a resource of Keys for Kids Ministries. Are you stressed out about finding a job for the summer? Or maybe you are feeling behind as your friends put in college applications. Maybe you're considering quitting a sports team to try a different club next fall. I mean, there's a lot of big decisions that we have to make, and it can be overwhelming. That's why we'll be talking about making decisions with God this month on the Unlocked Devo Instagram. And come back for tomorrow's devotion with me, how sometimes your sin can surprise even you. But until then, I'm Dylan, encouraging you to live life unlocked, opening the door to God in your life.